In module 9.2, you learn about simple connections. A simple connection is usually pinned and is frequently found in multi-storey braced steel frames. Many simple connections can be standardised and can be found in the green book. Standardised steel connections can reduce cost and increase efficiency. Each structural connection can initially be created as a type and then overridden by an instance for the design to Eurocode 3. Member end forces can be added manually on the analytical member, or you can use Dynamo and Robot Results Connect to transfer the forces and moments to Revit. The Green Book gives essential guidance and procedures for typical connections found in building structures. It has been produced by a number of bodies, including the Steel Construction Institute. In the table below, you can see the recommended values for a universal beam with a section size of 457 by 191 by 89. You'd also notice in the table we have the maximum shear resistance, some critical checks and also the tying forces that this will resist, as well as the geometry for the fin plate welds and the notching. This is the connection we'll be using in this tutorial. Go ahead and open up Project A, Modules 1 to 8. The model will open in the 3D view. We're going to begin by adding some connections into this project and then placing a simple connection between a column and a beam. Let's begin by selecting the steel ribbon and on the steel ribbon you'll note here that we have the connections button and here we can go to connection settings. Let's go ahead and select connection settings and you can see here in the structural connection settings dialog box we have two tabs. We have the connections tab and also the parameters tab. Here we could add further parameters in here to control the state of this structural connection. For example, we could add some fabrication information into here if required. However, let's select the connections tab. And in the connections tab, you can see here we have a list of available connections. In this example here, we're going to place a fin plate connection. And in Revit, that's called a shear plate. So here we'll go ahead and look for just this one connection, shear plate. And we'll click on this add button here to add it across to the right hand side. Now of course as we go through the project here we can add more and more of these as we need them and we'll then click OK. Let's now go ahead and zoom up on the column and beam connection and we're going to add that connection in between this beam here and this column. So if we just hover over the beam here we can see this is a universal beam and it's a 457152.67. And we can see here we have a universal column section 254 by 89. So before we can add the connection, we'll first need to select both of the elements. So I'm going to hold the control key down and select the beam and the column. And then I'll go ahead and select the steel ribbon and select connection. As soon as we select the connection tool, you can now see that Revit's placed a generic connection between these two members. We can change this to our fin plate, so we'll select the properties palette in the type selector and here we can select shear plate. As mentioned in previous videos, you can see that the cuts and voids and reference planes and start and end join cutbacks are also going to be disabled here. That's fine, we knew about that, so we can just close down the warnings dialog box. Now a very important step, in order to actually see that connection, we must change the detail level to fine. So if I select this to fine, you can now see that we have our connection in place. If I select the connection and then orbit around the model, we can see it. However, it's going to be very difficult to actually see that connection due to all the other steel work around it. So what we'll do is isolate this. I'll select the column and then up on the ribbon here, we can select selection box. You can now see that we've isolated that connection. Again, we can just use the selection box here just to trim this down. So perhaps we'll do something like this. And of course now when we zoom in we can see this connection much better. Okay, so let's now start to configure this connection as per the green book. So we'll select our shear plate connection. And in the properties palette you can see here in the type selector we've currently got shear plate. Let's click on edit type. And in the type properties dialog box we'll duplicate this connection to create a new one. So in this example here, I'm going to type in the beam that this connection is going to be suitable for. So this is a UB457 by 152 by 67. We'll then go ahead and click OK. In the left hand corner of the type properties dialog box, you can see that we have a preview. If you're not seeing the preview, you can select the preview button here just to give us a preview of our connection type. And then we can rotate around this and then zoom in so we can see our connection. 
In the Type Properties dialog box, we can now select the Edit button to modify the parameters. So we can now see that this takes us into the Cuts and Stiffeners tab, and you can see here we have a beam cut from the face of the column, and you can see here we have a 10mm cut. That's absolutely fine. What we're going to do here, though, is go directly to the Plates and Bolts area in here, and we'll select Plate Layout. So you can see here that we can set our plate thickness. Now, according to the green book, this connection is going to have a 10 millimeter thick plate. So we'll make sure that that's set to 10. And you can see here that is, in fact, the default. We could change the side from the left hand side of the beam to the right hand side, like so. Or we could have one on both sides. But in this case, we'll keep this on the left hand side. And you'd also then see that we can set our plate type. So we can have flange top, uh, yeah, flange bottom and so on. We can change that if we want to. In this case, we're going to leave this as a rectangular plate. And we'd also create a marking for this plate. Let's now select the plate shape. So again here, if we had a skewed beam coming into the column here, we could obviously set and configure this. Now you'll notice at the minute that we have a corner finish here. I've just got this uh, corner here that in this case is being chamfered off. I'm just going to change that. So for the corner finish here, I'm just going to set that to default and I'm not going to cut off that corner. I'll then go to the bolts and holes tab. And here we can configure our diameter of bolt. Now again, according to the green book, the diameter is 20 millimeters. Uh, for the bolt type here, we're going to use uh, XOX. That's just a generic bolt type and nut. And here, of course, we can set our bolt assembly. And what I'd like to do here is set this with a washer. So this is going to create a washer on the side of the bolt and also on the side of the nut. So if I just orbit around the model here and we zoom in, we can see we've got the bolt head and we've got a washer in there. And again, if we rotate that round and take a look here, you can see we've got a washer before the nut as well. So we'll keep that as it is at the minute. We can also add in some tolerance in here as well. So you'll see I've got a variable hole tolerance. So here I'm going to do this on the plate and I'll set hole tolerance in this case of two. Notice here as well that we could create a slotted part. So if we wanted to, we could create slots in the beam just to give us a, a little bit of play while we're constructing this. But again, here I'll just set that to none. And now we can select our horizontal bolts. So let's just get the view into a, a better display and then we'll select horizontal bolts. Now in this case here, what we want to do is set an edge distance of 60. And we only want one row of bolts. Yep, so we can now see what's happening there. Now I'd also like to set the edge distance here to 50 millimeters as well. So now you can see that we have a distance there of 50. In this case, that's actually from the edge of the bolt center line here. OK, let's now go to the vertical bolts. And here we want to set our layout distance in this example here to 90. For the vertical bolts, we want a group of five. So we'll select five here. And here you can see we can set our start distance. So the start distance in this case will be 50. And we'll set a distance between each bolt of 70. Now you see here we can also control the set out. And what we want to do here is set out the bolts, not the plate. So you can see here that the layout distance of 90 there is going to the first bolt, not the actual plate. So there's our connection. You can see it looks quite nice at the minute. Uh, we just need to go through and set some welds up as well. So you can see here we have welds and marking. I'm going to select the welds tab here. And in this case here, it's going to be welded in the factory or the uh, fabrication yard or as the Americans say, the shop. And we'll put in a weld of eight in there. Again, we can have weld stiffeners set up if we wanted to, and also punch marks as well. But that's good for us, so we'll click OK. And we'll click OK again to the type properties. And of course now we can review our connection. In this case here, we can now disable the section box. Let's also now look at the design of this connection to EC3. So once again, we'll select the connection. And you'll notice in the properties palette here, we have override by instance. This would allow me to design each type of connection because obviously we could have different loading conditions on each of the beams and columns. So in this case here, I'm going to override this by the instance. And then I can select the edit button here for detailed parameters. As we do this, you can see right at the top here, we have an area for properties. And if I select this here, you can see that we have code checking. Now, according to the green book, if we have a row of five bolts here, this should have a maximum shear capacity of 383 kilonewtons. So we'll just test that. So because here this is a simple connection, you can see here that we uh, can't put a moment in here, but certainly we can put a vertical force on this. And in this case, I'm going to type in 350 in there. And here we'll select check. 
If we now look at the fin plate dialog box, you can now see that we have an OK status here. And if I go ahead and view the report now, you can now see that we have our verification report for our shear plates. So of course here, we just uh, outline the main beam and the secondary beam in here. So that's the column and the beam. We then have all the various different properties in there. And then we go through the verification. So we can now see the verifications on the bolt and we've got OK in here. As we go a bit further down here, you'll see that we also get utilization as well. So you can see we're almost on utilization for the bolt shear verification at 98%. But then you can see here we've got bolt bearing on plate, 72%, and so on. So we can go through and just check each part of this report and obviously issue this as part of the project if we wanted to. Okay, so there's our report. Another option we would have here is to use load compilations that we've created in Revit, and then that would pass all of the forces across directly into this dialog box. As I mentioned before, we can also use Dynamo and Robot to actually take the results package and then start to take information from that as well. Finally here, you can see that we have an approval status. So in this case, I'm going to set this to approved. And of course here, you'll also notice that the code checking status is set to OK. Now, of course, I could set up some filters in Revit to show the connections in green that have been approved and the connections in red that haven't been approved. OK, so I now might want to propagate that connection to similar configurations of beam and column. So I'll select my connection, I'll right mouse click, and I'll choose Propagate to Connection. And you can now see Revit starting to think about this uh, propagation around the structure. As I said before, it's going to look for similar instances of the column and the beam configuration there, and then propagate that connection to those various different areas. This is obviously a much faster way of getting connections in between these members. Once again here, you can see that Revit's given us a warning, and it's basically saying that um, any start and end join cutbacks and cut with voids and reference planes will be eliminated. That's fine. We can just accept that by clicking OK. And now if we zoom out, we should see other connections starting to be modeled. So again here, I can see this connection added in here, this one here, and so on. So Revit's uh, gone around and put that on each connection area. Now, of course, we can obviously pick one of these and we can again override this by instance and start to make localized changes to this if the connection had failed its calculations. Okay, so let's make sure that we've saved our project. So we'll click on save here. And that concludes this tutorial on simple connections.